How's it going guys? It's Ryan here, and welcome to this low-level Commander Zilliana or Ceridoman solo guide. Uh, so quick note, I've done this guide differently than any of the other ones I've done. I've changed the overlay and I've changed sort of what information I've included and what information I've omitted. Uh, so please let me know, if you, especially if you've seen my other guides, uh, what you think of this and if you prefer it or what you liked and what you didn't like, uh, because I can absolutely go back to something that looks a little bit more like uh, the previous guides I've made, uh, if that is what is preferred. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, let's jump right in to the guide. Okay, so on screen is some basic information about the Ceridoman boss. I'm not going to read through it all. You can pause it and read through that if you'd like. Okay, now into Rex and Rex. Uh, so the requirements for the boss, you need 70 agility and access to the God Wars dungeon. In terms of recommendations, I'd recommend you have 75 plus magic or ranged, 70 plus defense, and 37 with ideally 70 prayer. Let's start off, this is the gear you're going to want, you're going to use magic or range, you can kind of use either one, they both work, uh, but for a low level, melee is not recommended. Uh, so this would be a good typical magic setup, basically as you can see I'm wearing full dragon rider, it's fairly inexpensive, the full set's about maybe 1.3, 1.4 mil, which is pretty cheap. Obviously Ganodermic's a great option and so is Warpriest armor uh, from the world events, uh, so all those are great options. I've got my subjugation boots and gloves just for some extra magic bonus and some prayer bonus. I've got a seer's ring, I'm using a staff of light which is a tier 75 magic weapon that'll only cost you about 112k. You want a Ceridoman arrow or any other Ceridoman item, obviously this Ceridoman arrow will only ring you 72 GP and it will give you protection from the Ceridoman uh, creatures in the God Wars dungeon. Other thing you can do is you could wear a, a shard of Zaros up here instead of a sign. Uh, what that'll do is give you immunity to all of the creatures in the God Wars dungeon. Uh, now in terms of auras, you're going to want vampirism or penance. Those are kind of the go-tos. Uh, and the thing that's great about the Dragon Rider is it has a ton of prayer bonus, so hopefully I will not be running out of prayer. Uh, so yeah, this is my my gear setup. Obviously you can make upgrades and downgrades accordingly, and it's a similar thing for range. You just want the highest tier weapon you can uh, with some good armor. Um, so yeah, in terms of prayers, obviously you're going to be praying the best prayers you can to boost your stats. I'm assuming as a low level guide you do not have 95 prayer for the great curses, so for me I'm going to be using augury, protect from item, and protect from magic. Those are going to be the prayers I'm going to be using. Uh, in terms of familiars, uh, depending on your summoning level, if you've got a tortoise, bring that. Uh, but a, a bunyip is probably better than a terror bird, so I'm going to be using bunyips for this trip. Uh, in terms of action bar setups, this is an example of one, you don't need to follow it perfectly. If you have the sunshine ability, it's a great one to use whenever you can. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, this is kind of a, a good look at what your action bar could look like. Uh, anything like this will do just fine uh, for what we're doing. Okay, so in terms of inventory setup and spells and stuff like that, obviously just use the highest tier spell you can. So I am 99 magic, so I'm going to be using surges. Uh, and that's basically what you want to do, so it's okay if you use waves or blasts or bolts, whatever you have. I probably wouldn't go there with air strike, though you may get a little bit wrecked on your face. And I'm using air spells because air runes only take one invent space, and Ceridoman boss is not weak to anything in particular. Uh, so that is why I'm using air, just to save space. Okay, so I've got my Trollheim tablets, but you could also just use the Teleport to Trollheim spell, the God Wars Dungeon Teleport spell, uh, or you could just run up the mountain if you haven't done enough quest requirements. Uh, so yeah, in terms of invent, this is what I've got. I've got a good amount of shark, I've got a lot of super restore flasks, I might have extra by the end. I've got a grand defense potion and a grand magic potion. These are going to be the best tradable potions in the game, uh, so you want to make sure you've got your hands on those. Obviously, if you've got extremes or overloads or any of those, bring those because they're going to be better, but I'm just assuming as a low-level guide that you do not have those. That's why we're geared in tier 70 with a tier 75 weapon as well. Uh, so you're going to want your familiar, you're going to want to summon it, and then you're going to want your one extra as well. Uh, if the trip is going to be longer, obviously it depends on your stats how long your trip's going to be, but you don't want your bunyip to die and you to die because of it. Uh, so yeah, that's about it in terms of gear. Uh, what you want to do is you want to just teleport and break your Trollheim tablet, so let's go and do that. Okay, so in terms of how to get there, basically break your Trollheim tablet or get up onto the Trollheim mountain if that's your method of getting there. And you're going to recharge your summoning points at the obelisk, and at this point you're just going to go as I go. Okay, so basically you're just going to run down the mountain, you're going to keep scaling down the cliffs uh, until you get to the big boulder, uh, which we will be at in just a second. Uh, once you get to the big boulder, it's quite simple, you can either squeeze past it or you can push it aside. Uh, then you're going to enter the God Wars dungeon. At this point you're going to run east and you're going to climb down the rocky wall. So now for your kill count, in order to enter the boss room, you need to kill 40 Ceridoman followers. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to basically take mostly single target abilities and just go one at a time. Use the combat triangles if you're ranging, kill the spiritual mages if you've got the slayer requirement. Uh, and if you are using magic, try and kill the meleeers, the knights, and the spiritual warriors if you can. It'll make your life a little bit easier. Now you'll see in the clip I'm getting wrecked a little bit. That's because I was using multi-target abilities. Only do this if you're higher level, especially if you have soul split. Uh, otherwise you end up taking a lot of damage. Uh, 
so yeah, ideally you're attacking one Ceratoman follower at a time until you've got your 40. Okay, once you've got your 40 kill count, you're basically going to run south, enter the room, and you are going to be good to go, ready for your Sarah trip. Alrighty guys, so Sarah boss is usually pretty busy, you usually get quite a few people, and the best way to do it is actually to make an instance, unless you're very low level, in which case uh, it's probably not worth your money, uh, but for most people, even at lower levels, uh, if you think you're going to last more than a couple kills, uh, you're going to want to make an instance, so you're going to quick click, so you're going to click on start, slash join custom encounter, uh, you're going to say it's 200k, max players, you're going to set it on one, unless you want to be joined by anyone, spawn speed, you want to set not to standard, you probably want fast or fastest. It depends on whether or not you need to use regenerate at the end of every kill. Uh, for me, I'm actually going to set it on fast and not fastest because being able to use regenerate can be very, very helpful uh, in making your kills just work a little bit better, a little more smoothly. So I'm putting it on fast. Uh, although for the most kills per hour, you put it on fastest if you can last long enough. Uh, protection doesn't really matter. You don't want practice mode. You don't want hard mode, most likely. Uh, and you're going to click start. And instance created, we just lost 200k. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your quick prayers are set correctly. As you can see, I have Augury, Protect from Magic, and uh, Protect Item. Uh, you're going to pot up with your Grand Magic Potion um, and your Grand Defense Potion. And then basically what you want to do is you just want to run around the room. Okay, so this is basically going to be an ideal kill and what that looks like. So as you can see, we're just waiting in a corner, waiting for the boss to spawn. And basically what you want to do is you want to keep running around the room uh, but if you spam click properly, and here's the important thing, spam click properly, uh, your abilities when they fire off, they won't actually slow you down at all in your running. Uh, what that means is you can keep running and you will always be outside of melee distance. So this is kind of an example of kill. If you look at my kill count, you'll notice that I actually stayed for quite a few kills. I was using less than one food per kill just to prove that you can last for quite a while, even with a lower level setup. Uh, but the trick is when you get to the long length, what you want to do is you want to use the surge ability uh, so that you get further away, and then you want to use asphyxiate. The thing about asphyxiate is it actually takes three seconds to fully fire off. Uh, so if you just did it without using surge and getting kind of ahead of the boss, uh, what would happen is he would catch up to you and wreck your face in just a little bit. Uh, so basically, you just want to keep running around the room, and it's not too bad as long as you're doing that. Uh, just focus on hitting your abilities, and that is about it. That's all you need to do. Make sure your prayer doesn't drop. Uh, if you want to throw off an ultimate ability, you can. Uh, Metamorphosis works too as well. I wouldn't recommend using Sunshine if you're running around the room, because obviously it's Sunshine, and doing that around the room would basically defeat the purpose of it, because Sunshine only works if you're standing within the actual Sunshine spot. Uh, so yeah, if you want to use Metamorphosis, go for it. Any other ultimates, go for it. Uh, but you can actually get by just using your magic thresholds over and over again, and it'll actually work quite well. I wouldn't recommend using Tendrils if you have them, just because it kind of kills your food, uh, unless you've got Soul Split, of course. Uh, but as you can see, there is effectively an ideal kill. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but we didn't really use any food. Uh, the Bunny Up helped us out, Vampirism helped us out, and that was kind of all we needed to get the kill. Uh, now, on the minions, what you want to do is you want to just get full adrenaline uh, so that you can either use Guthix's Blessing or you can just use Regenerate uh, to get as much HP back as you possibly can. Uh, now, the other thing is the minions drop a ton of food as well, and you saw me get a clue scroll there. Uh, so that's another great strategy is just eat the food that the minions drop before the next kill. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the strategy uh, for low-level Sarah. It actually works very well with range as well, so you can totally do that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the general strat. Okay, what everyone is actually killing this boss for, we're talking about the notable drops. Uh, now, this is not drops that can be put in a banknote, although, coincidentally, most of them can be put in a banknote. Uh, these are drops that are noteworthy based on their value or potential value. Uh, so, you can get Arbital Crossbows, Offhand Arbital Crossbows, Ceratoman Hilts, Ceratoman's Whispers, Ceratoman's Murmurs, Auburn Locks, which is for the Serapet, and Hard and Elite Clue Scrolls. These are all of the drops that are worth uh, well over 200k. Uh, from this boss, and some of them are worth quite a bit more. As of the time I'm recording this, the offhand armadal crossbow is 13 mil, and the Ceratoman hilt is 11 mil. Uh, so if you get lucky, you can make a ton of bank here, and that is why this is such a great boss, one of the best God Wars dungeon bosses to make money. Uh, so anyway guys, thanks so much for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think of the setup, and what I included and what I didn't. I'd love some constructive criticism on that, just because this is a totally new uh, sort of way I've made this guide, a totally different way from anything I've done in the past. Um, other than that, uh, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, maybe a, another mad strat that I didn't include or that you'd like to see me take a look at and see if it works, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to reply to every single comment. 
Um, just make sure you've got a Google Plus account because sometimes I get comments of people saying this doesn't work or can you help me with this and I can't reply to your comment if you don't have a Google Plus account so you might want to go and do that. Uh, but anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this guide. Hopefully it helps you out with this boss. Best of luck, have a good one, and peace! Now the last thing is, if you want to check out any of my other guides, there will be a link to a playlist in the description that has a playlist for all of my other PVM guides. So if you want to check that out as well, go right ahead.